Welcome back to our program here on the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Ray Guo. We will continue our conversation with Dr. Huang Yenan, who is the president of Vitan Corporation in central Taiwan that specializes in WiMAX technology and services. Dr. Huang, we talk about the importance of environment right. for any industry or any technology to grow. Now, of course, you need to have the right policy from the government, right. and you need to have the right technological development to you know, fit the market needs, and also you need to have customers who are receptive to the new technology. And being one of the pioneers right. in this field of WiMAX technology in Taiwan, what do you think about the overall environment in Taiwan regarding WiMAX technology application? And also, what do you think are the areas or the aspects of the environment that can be improved to make the you know, WiMAX technology more acceptable in Taiwan? Okay. First of all, I think the telecom industry is, is a heavily uh, regulated industry. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and thanks to the government, uh, mm -hmm. they actually make the, the spectrum available and mm -hmm. then they uh, push in the WiMAX a service industry about a couple of years ago. Yes. Uh, they make all everything possible because of the effort. Mm, um, okay. So environment-wise, I think government is very support, okay. uh, very supportive. All right. um, but as I said, in general, so for the mobile uh, right. environment, uh, as I mentioned, finding a finding a space station site yes. acquisition is difficult. All right. There's a lot of regulation today uh, yes. making the site acquisition very difficult. Mm. Okay. So I hope that the regulation will be changed. Okay. For, for uh, special for uh, able to find the sites and get the license or the, the right of using the site for base station. Okay. That, a lot of regulation can be eased for that purpose. Okay. The other thing I think can be uh, common can do is really helping uh, to do the mm -hmm. sort of advocacy or the uh, explain to general public why WiMAX is needed. The okay. radiation or radio uh, sort of radio issues okay. actually is because of all. WiMAX 4G uh, is an advanced technology. They need much uh, smaller power to transmit the radio okay, than the signal. say 2G. Yes, okay. Okay. So for, for example, like the, the base thing we're using today mm. is five, five watts output power, okay. Okay. or at most 10 watts. And, but in the past, and, and because of five watts, 10 watts, we don't need, uh, with our base station very small. All right. We don't need air conditioning for base station. It saves a lot of energy and power okay. because we don't need a big uh, shelter and put uh, a lot of machine inside. We don't okay. need AC to cool it down, okay. and the radio power is only five watts to uh, ten okay. watts, ten much watts. smaller. Okay. Uh, so you compare to two G, for example. Now two G, they need a huge, uh, basic shelter to put mm -hmm. huge equipment, okay. and the output power is usually in terms of hundreds or thousands of watts. Okay. okay. So radiation, radio, uh, solar energy is much larger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we can uh, replace a lot of 2G networks mm -hmm. with the 4G networks, first of all, we can save a lot of energy because we don't need air condition for every base station. Yes. And second of all, because the power requirement to transmit the radio is much smaller. Yes. We use 2G network, uh, we can also reduce a lot of radio solar intensity of the air. Okay. And actually for people who worry about uh, radio and so on, actually it's, it's supposed to, to be a uh, good for the general public, but mm -hmm. people don't know about that. People see the base station, then they, they start to uh, oppose the base station sites come up. So as a result, you know, 2G network has to be there, okay. 3G network has to be there. They use a very large power, they transmit much larger uh, radio intensity over okay. the air. All right. So I think there's a lot of work government can, can tell general public, you know, what is good about 4G okay. network. Not only it gives you fast speed, but from okay. an environmental point of view, it's also much safer. All right. And it's saving a lot of energy too. Okay. okay, but one question that comes to mind is regarding government regulation. Is it mostly at the central government level or is it local government? Um, regulation, a lot of this regulation uh, uh, actually is, is uh, done in NCC. Oh, okay. okay. Right. And that the regulation is, uh, in general, I need to be changed, especially for digital convergence. Okay. okay. So um, I'm hoping that, um, you know, we have a new gen uh, NCC committee now. Yes. Yeah. I hope the new company can really make things happen. Okay. okay, there's a lot of uh, regulations uh, mm -hmm. that was set, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Okay, uh, which is uh, the a lot of new technology cannot mm -hmm. be covered with today's regulation. They need okay. to be changed. All right. So I'm hoping that a new NGC committee will do a lot of changes to make, uh, you know, including mobile, including the digital convergence. Okay. available and can make the industry much easier to go forward. Okay, and also regarding educating the public, 
Would you think that should fall in the responsibility of um, NCC, or is it going to be MOTC, the Ministry I, of I, uh, Transportation and Communication? No, I think the NCC definitely should have this responsibility. Okay. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, you know, any actually in general, the government has such a responsibility. Yes. This. They are um, not only regulated uh, the industry, but also should be as a promotion of the industry, of course. helping the, the, the industry to move forward. So especially for 4G uh, sort of the mobile services, mm. um, it's, okay. it's the future of the autonomous industry. Of course. And then um, NCC, uh, or the general, the, in general, the general the government can do a lot of work uh, to educate our public and make sure that in Taiwan we are the most advanced 4G so we have the most advanced 4G services available, and, yes. and then with that we can build a lot of new services mm -hmm. or new equipment and so on highway wise and then export that to, to, to the world. Okay. Yeah. Well Dr. Wang, let's broaden our perspectives and look at the international environment. Right. How does WiMAX technology compete with other forms of you know, 4G technologies that are available today on the international scene? And uh, how friendly or is it how competitive uh, is the international you know, environment regarding WiMAX technology? Okay, so WiMAX has been used, uh, the last report I saw is, is, is um, uh, more than 100 uh, some con uh, more than 100 uh, countries in the world are using quite WiMAX. Quite impressive, right? yes. And uh, there are a lot of deployments, like more than 100, uh, a couple hundreds of deployment sites. I don't have, oh, I forgot okay. the numbers. That's okay. So it's, it's a mature technology. All so right. it's, it's been used in many, many countries. Mm -hmm. The most successful, uh, there are a number of successful examples of using WiMAX. Well, of course, ClearWire just announced their uh, earning and also their um, quarter report. And yes. they have up, you know, basically upgrade their sort of expected number of customers. Yes. Uh, they will grow to uh, uh, two million, three million uh, customers really? uh, by, the, by, by this Very year. Very good. Yes. And, and they, they will cover major, major metropolitan like New York City, Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, all mm -hmm. the major metropolitan uh, will be covered this year. Okay. So they quickly expand the YMAX footprint to all, all the right. US. All right. um, in Russia, in uh, like the Malaysia, Okay. And in India, the new new comer will be India. Okay. All these countries, and of course in South America, so the, um, all these countries, they actually jump forward. They skip um, a lot of fixed wire deployment because okay. they want to have internet to everyone. All and right. much easier to on using WiMAX. Of course. So a lot of these countries actually using WiMAX to be able to jump ahead in terms of the infrastructure. They don't need to go through, again, the 2G, 3G. Yes. Um, sort of old technology, they jump to a 4G. Okay. And 4G available today is only WiMAX. Mm -hmm. So. You can see that a lot of development countries are mm -hmm. using 4G WiMAX okay. as the infrastructure they're going to deploy. And okay. We see that in India, we see that in Indonesia, we see that okay. in, in Russia, in many countries. Okay. And they gain a lot of customers. All right. Okay, the momentum is here. All right. okay, so um, so I, I do expect that uh, WiMAX will do well. Now, of course, uh, a lot of developed countries, um, they have a 3G network just deployed today. Okay. And they haven't made money out of 3G network yet. Okay. So they don't have, uh, you know, they don't need to work, deploy WiMAX today okay, because, 4G. Um, because okay. of 4G WiMAX uh -huh. today. So they are looking for the next technology. Uh, oh, that's, okay. that's why they are uh, So they may for, skip all the way to no, 5G? No, no, there's no 5G. There's a, <laughs> okay. there's a, in the 4G, there are two standards. Yes, One is course. called LTE. Yes. LTE is about two years behind. Yes. And they can wait for LTE. All right. And uh, and then of course one uh, what is available today is called WiMAX. Okay. So they they basically uh, they wait for this LT two years later. Okay. Or three years later they they make change to LT, okay. but that was three years later. All right. Uh, but the problem I think the main competition for WiMAX today is they are incumbent 3G operators. They have a, uh, basically they have built up the networks already. Okay. The other networks is slow, but they have a the nationwide footprint. Okay. Customer base. They have a customer base. They have a nation, mostly have nationwide footprint. Like okay. in Taiwan, there are yes. many operators using 3G network. They mostly have a nationwide footprint already. Of course. Yes. And for, for WiMAX, we, we are new. Yes. We have a uh, number of major, major metropolitan, but we don't have a nationwide coverage. Okay. So our main competition today coming from 3G operators. Okay. And uh, regarding the fact that, that you know Taiwan is the leader. Right. in WiMAX technology development. Right. And you said that over 100 countries today now accept WiMAX technology. Right. How tough is it to have international cooperation 
in this field. Okay, YMAX, um, uh, like I said, we, uh, there's something called standard, actually called standard, mm -hmm. that define a lot of uh, technical issues. Yes. Um, there's a forum called YMAX forum. Okay. There, they define a lot of roaming issues. Okay. How they define some additional standard for roaming to happen. All right. So, uh, these are in progress, okay, and um, there's uh, uh, efforts, like for example, like with among uh, big operators, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the UQ in Japan, uh, Clearwire mm -hmm. uh, in in US, US yes. uh, the mm -hmm. Yota in Russia, mm -hmm. and those are, you know, they, these people need to do a roaming. So they actually go ahead and define a lot of uh, the protocol, a lot of uh, standards uh, among these operators for roaming. Okay. So um, since are happening, so it's not that difficult. I think mm -hmm. I believe in in uh, by the end of this year or the, definitely in a year. Okay. You can see a lot of long means. So people in US can go to Japan okay. and can never use WiMAX. All right. And also even Taiwan, including Taiwan too, people come to Taiwan okay. can also use WiMAX. Okay, I'm US. going to ask you something, Dr. Huang, we discussed in private before the taping started, is that how tough is it you know, for us in Taiwan to have a cross-trade cooperation with the application in China? Um, well, I think that uh, you know, China is, put, is talking about TDLT, which yes. is 80% uh, similar to WiMAX. Yes. So I believe that at some point of time, uh, yeah. this equipment vendor, uh, including device uh, manufacturers, yes. would have, uh, because there are so many similarities, so they have devices who can do both TDLT and WiMAX. Okay. So I believe that um, the services, uh, the device you have, it will yeah. be integrated. And okay. because there's the circuit wise, there are so many similarities. They can yeah. easy to make a device with dual mode okay. and access uh, both uh, technologies. So yeah. I believe that, uh, yeah, very soon, especially when China is pushing TDLT yeah. and, and it's very similar to WiMAX. I mentioned yeah. it's 80% similarity. Yeah. So it's not an issue, I think. Yeah. We're hopeful that it will become a priority issue when two sides get together and talk yep. about ver you know, vertical integration yep. in the future. We're going to take another break on our program, and we'll be right back and continue our conversation with Dr. Huang Yanan, who is the president of the V-Time Corporation in Taiwan. I'll see you in a little bit.